Hey there, uh, today I wanted to show you how uh, to parse JSON with Surday, and I actually wanted to show you a little bit about how Surday works uh, using the derive macro. So um, I've got the documentation open for Surday here. So Surday is a framework for serializing, deserializing Rust data structures efficiently and generically. So um, one thing to, to note about its uh, design system, the way it's implemented, is uh, it uses the serialize and deserialize traits. Um, so, or Surday's derive attribute to automatically generate implementation at compile time. So, a lot of other, um, a lot of other languages that implement JSON serialization, deserialization, or not just JSON, because you can see here with uh, the formats, it's got uh, YAML, TOML, uh, ROM, which is a Rusty Object Notation, BSON, uh, BSON for like MongoDB. Um, so it handles quite a bit of different formats, message pack. Uh, but one of the things that it does differently, like it says here, um, many other uh, languages or implementations will use some form of reflection or run type runtime type information in order to like form the kind of the serialization. Uh, but what Surday does is so you either will handwrite it with the serialize or deserialize traits uh, by implementing the serialize and deserialize functions, or uh, use the derive attribute. And what will happen is it's in the derive attribute, what you'll get is uh, something like this, where um, so the derive attribute is a form of a procedural, what's called a macro. Um, so on a macro function, a procedural macro, what you can have is uh, essentially ability to generate code from attributes. So what you get when you tr attempt to implement your own macro, let's say you have like this derive macro for hello, and then down here you have a trait called hello macro, so hello macro. Um, you can have, here we go. So hello macro derive, okay? So you use this thing called a proc macro derive, and what you get as an input is a token stream. So you can see here it's construction, construct a representation of rest code as a syntax tree so that we can manipulate. manipulate. Um, yeah, so you say notice we split the code into a hello macro divine, which is responsible for parsing the token stream, and implement hello macro function, which is responsible for transforming that, the uh, syntax tree. Right, so you see here you get like fields like ident, uh, data, which has fields, uh, things like that. Um, so if you look at the actual code for Surday, so we get Surday derive source lib. So see here it's implementing proc macro derive serialize, and that's getting a token stream. So what you get when you output, so here over here on the left I've already done like these attributes, so you want to implement uh, JSON serialization, for instance, you, what you have is you'll com combine Surday with uh, Surday JSON, which is the output that we want, and then you add the derive serialize, deserialize for the point, and then we're going to call Surday JSON to string, pass in reference to point, and then you get uh, serialized or deserialized, right? So when we call a cargo run. Right, you get the serialized and deserialized form. Um, yeah, so when we look at that uh, and the cargo expand, right, you can see here how uh, not only do we have the sort of JSON, but we also have the debug formatter. Uh, but you can see, and we'll see here, uh, zoom out just a little bit. You may have to zoom in. Uh, but basically, what you've got is um, each field is kind of Formatted output. It's quite difficult to read, honestly. But you know, uh, actually, maybe we can expand it. Here we go. All right. So like, here you have uh, external search in, serialize, right? Your point serialize state serialize struct. And then we're going to serialize this field called x with the x val serialize y, right? So it 
uh, in doing this way by having a kind of a procedural macro to generate what the serialization code is going to look like, it's effectively as fast as a handwritten serializer deserializer, uh, which is pretty nice. So I thought maybe we could combine this with uh, just making a simple little web, web API here. We'll use Active Actix Web for now. Um, just kind of demonstrate how we can combine this with uh, act, uh, just making a simple web API. Right, so um, I've already gone ahead and added the dependencies for that. So I've got, um, I don't need Actix files because we're not serving any um, HTML at the moment. It's just going to be Actix Web, CERT, and CERT JSON. Right, so uh, if you look at the tutorial, uh, tutorial here on the right, um, we just need to add in this Actix Web main. Um, Tokyo main is also another option, which is the runtime here. Uh, my plan is to create a video specifically on the async runtime and async await, talk a little bit more about futures, uh, but I'll leave that for another video. So, so we're just going to say Actix Web main. Uh, in some of the other videos, you notice I use option a lot. Result is another way, uh, another common struct that you'll run into. And result has different, uh, let's see here. So it's basically a way to handle errors properly. So if you have a result, you can have an OK. Uh, or if you have an error, you have an uh, error. And one of the ways that you can handle errors is by using this uh, short circuiting question mark here. All right, so here's one way to match. Another way to do it is right here. So basically, if if I encounter an error, then I just wanted to uh, exit exit that function early at that point and return in the error. So and you can do it as many times as you want. So it's a nice way to handle errors. Okay, so let's go back to our Actix web here, and then we'll just create our web server. Import Actix web. You know, create a closure function. Need our app. Import from there. And then we're just going to call this service function to pass our. Go ahead and bind to. And uh, wait. Okay. Check on that. Hello. Great responder. Get ourselves another attribute. So we would expect here that this would also be a type of macro that will give us uh, presumably one of these routes for us, but we're just going to do uh, like hello. And then we have to import that here. Okay. And then we're just going to have HTTP response. Okay. And then it has this function called JSON, right? So we can set the JSON body and build HTTP response. So this is going to just make sure the output has application slash JSON on it. And at this point, we it is expecting any value that implements serialize. Um, so in this case, it would be, right, the CERDA serialize is what it's referring to. So I'm just going to create a default value, right? And then, you know, that's it. So this is already running. Okay. Good. Let me have one little error here. Oh, so like I said before, right, the bind function is going to return a result because uh, it doesn't know if it's going to be able to listen on that port. Uh, so we got a bind for 7070. I'm going to do a question mark, right? Make sure that we exit early if it's an error. And then call run and await. Okay. And then we run that. Okay. As soon as that's actually runs. Uh, another thing that I wanted to actually, oh, never mind, there we go. Okay, so yeah, there we go. So we got our JSON value, hello world, serialize, 
uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, and actually I wanted to show you really quickly on the proc macro here. So if we go into token stream, right, library, provide standard distribution, provide if we go into token stream here, token stream, right, so you can kind of see a little bit about how um, it's already tokenized it, but we get an ident. There's a literal value ident. Right. So, right. Anyway, um, yeah, I thought that was kind of helpful for me to kind of look a little bit about like, okay, well, I'm just, I'm always writing these derived traits everywhere and, or I'm write, writing these derived macros and I'm not really sure what they're doing. Um, so what is it that, uh, like Surde is doing, for instance, that allows it to kind of serialize and deserialize things. So it's helpful for me to understand like, okay, it's, you know, you got an abstract syntax tree and that's being, you know, that's able to kind of, as it's processing all those tokens, and you got that tree, then now it can actually build a, effectively a hand written, hand written parser for uh, serialization and deserialization of JSON. And then now we can just combine it um, very quickly with a simple web API. So yeah, uh, yeah, if you like this video, go ahead and like it. Um, please subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see y'all in the next one. And hopefully next time we'll actually create a full web application. So see you in that one.